Welcome to a read-along with Dr. Powell in the book Discrete Perspectives in Mathematics. This is section 5.4, seeing counting on a post set. Okay, so let's think for a minute about tuples. All right, so one, zero, zero, zero. Usually when we have a tuple of numbers, we don't have it structured. But what if we want to throw a poset structure on this tuple like this? Um, so like one entry is below another entry and we kind of put it in a diagram like that. So we're going to take our tuple and we're going to structure it. Um, that actually helps us a lot when we study posets. If we think about um, like standard basis elements, like we had when we were looking at um, solving congruences, you know, how we had like an E1 and um, we had an E1 and an E2 and an E3. So let's, so we have like an E1, two and an E3 or something like that, where this is like one, zero, zero, and this would be like zero, one, zero, comma, and this is like, zero comma zero comma one something like that of course we could put we could have four elements and have four tuples as well but that's kind of what what we had there now what if and what if we had a post set now and we want like some standard basis elements of this post set so we throw zeros in at, at all the vertices except for one of them and then we have one basis element and another one and another one, but they're all structured. Kind of in the same way that this tuple is structured in a very simple way. Maybe you could say um, uh, that all the all the commas are really just arrows. So it's really just a really simple post set that's linear in style, just kind of going in one direction. So it's not even partial, it's just total. But let's make it partial now and kind of think about uh, another ordering on it. Okay, so let's keep going here and think about having different basis elements like this one, that one, that one, that one for um, a specific post set. So this is just a simple post set here, like a diamond post set um, in shape, right? And all right, so you can take any four tuple. Um, in Z4, what does that mean? That's the Cartesian product of Z4 times to make a tuple, tuples of four things. So like two, one, three, four, let's let this one right here be like the first position. Um, so maybe we'll write that out. So let's let this be the uh, first position. This one be the second position. So notice we have two, two is in the first position, one is in the second position, three is in the third position right there, third right there, and fourth is in the fourth position, fourth right there. Okay, so we can, we can express um, where we are by where we place it right here in the tuple as we write it out. Okay, now let's keep going here. Um, okay, an element is just a reminder that, um, okay, that this, that an element like this can represent a problem, right? That was like the congruence, the system of congruences was right like this. And then what we, what we did is we found a, um, we found an isomorphism that actually took us from the problem to a solution. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna consider a tuple like this as a problem, and it's gonna take us to a solution. Let's talk about what that problem is and what that solution is. It's in the same, in the same flavor as what we were doing when we were, when we were solving system of congruences, we found a map or an isomorphism that took us from here to a solution. And uh, you can think of this as a tuple, right? So you take something that's a tuple and then you output a solution. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a tuple, a 
like a four tuple here and output a solution. Okay, so um, here's the problem. We're gonna find, uh, so given a structured four tuple like this, we're gonna find another one. So that's gonna be the solution corresponding to these entries um, in such a way that right here, two, so what's on top right here, see this two? That's gonna be the sum of everything below it here in this tuple. So in, up, up to that point. So A plus B plus C plus D, all of those guys added together is gonna to be two, okay? So like two is like the sum of everything, um, including A and below it, all right? Then what about B? B is going to be the sum of, um, Okay, so B, well, what's in the position B is one. See the one? So one is in that position. So one is going to be the sum of B plus D, everything below, so at the point B and down below it. Um, what about three was right here in that location. And, and we want three to be the sum of everything below it in, in this particular, in this tuple that we're looking for. So we're looking for this tuple A, B, C, D, and we want three to be uh, the sum of C plus D in this new tip tuple. And then we want four to be the sum of, of, um, of D um, and everything below it, which is itself. So quite literally see this, we have a system of equations. Basically, we're just trying to find A, B, C, D that satisfy this system of equations. Two is that, one is that, Three is that, and four is that. Just a system of equations and four unknowns. We want to find a solution to that system. Okay, and the equations are given simply by taking the element right here, two, and wanting that to be the sum of everything at that point and below it in the um, in what we're looking for. And uh, then one, right over here is gonna be the sum of everything in what we're looking for um, up to that point. So B plus D and three is going to be C plus D and four is just simply going to be D itself. So we have the system of equations. Now, believe it or not, finding the solution to something like this is ac actually very useful in counting. Um, at least the idea lends itself to um, counting ideas if we're trying to count um, how many things there are in, in post sets. Um, so if things can be arranged like numbers of factors or numbers of, it, that can be arranged in a post set or maybe you're counting primitive bit strings um, of, of zeros and ones. And you, if you, if what you're counting can be, or sub sizes of subsets, if what you're counting can be arranged in a post set and it's one of the guys in a post set, then these count, this basic problem solving, um, can be useful. At least the idea lends itself to things that are useful. Okay. So, um, what does the word cumulative mean? It means everything up to a point. Sum and, what does that mean? That means um, part of a sum like C and D are, um, are both parts of a sum and three is the cumulative sum. So three is a cumulative sum and C and D are sum ands. So we can kind of think of this as a sum and problem. We're looking for sum ands. A, B, C, and D are sum ands. Um, that add up to these cumulative sums, two, one, three, four. So let's suppose that we have something like this. this these are cumulative sums and we're looking for, so that's where we start. We start with sums and we're gonna be looking for sum ends. Okay, and we can think of the problem as being the missing sum end problem. Okay. So first, so let's take a look at this. This is the sums, this tuple represented the sums, and we can write this in terms of the standard basis um, 
uh, ordered tuples, E1, E2, E3, and E4, as follows. A 2 times E1 plus 1 times E2 plus 3 times E3 plus 4 times E4. You can also think of these as simply being like 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Um, maybe we should write that out. Okay. Um, you could think of this as being like 1, 0, 0, 0. So 2 times that plus 1 times 0, 1, 0, 0, plus 3 times 0, 0, 1, 0, plus 4 times 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. So um, we can kind of think about that um, in, uh, in that way using the idea that E1, let's kind of go back up there and review what E1 um, was. Like this is E1, this is E2, this is E3, and that's E4 in a structured sense. And you can like add component wise, just as you would with a tuple. Okay. So you can actually represent, this is kind of interesting because you can actually represent this guy as a sum of like one times, like, well, two times that guy plus one times that guy plus three times that guy, plus four times that guy. So we can kind of split it up in the following way. So quite literally, what we've done is we've created a Z module. We have an outside multiplication by Z where we have these elements and we can multiply this by an element of Z, that by an element of Z, that by an element of Z, and that by an element of Z. And sums of them, um, we can multiply by elements of Z because we can distribute it to integers across a sum for outside multiplication. So um, the solution map, if we go to from the sums to the sum ends, this is actually a Z module map, which um, realizing that these tuples are actually give us actually a freezy module and a freezy module over here, we can actually represent the solution map by a matrix. Um, it's called the Mobius matrix for the, um, the particular structure of the post set called a Mobius map is this map that's given by that matrix. Um, so let's take a look at that for a minute. Um, let's just solve these, uh, let's solve the problem for the standard basis elements. And that's really all we need to get the matrix. Because you remember when we were doing, um, when we were solving congruences, what we did is we solved the we solved the congruences that corresponded to the standard basis elements, like one, zero, and zero, one. Similarly, we solve the problem for the standard basis elements, and then the uh, result would just be we multiply, um, we multiply each of those solutions by something and add them up, and we get the final result. Okay, for, so for instance, um, let's solve this problem. Um, what should the sum ends be? Well, um, uh, this is, uh, let's see, well, um, so this is this, okay, so let's work through that. So, okay, start at the bottom. These are the sums, right? Okay, so you want, one right here to be the sum of every D and below. Well, it's just D, so D is one. We go up here, this is gonna be B plus D. So zero is gonna be equal to B plus D. Um, and let's see, then that would actually give us B as negative one, right? Solving that out. Position C, zero is gonna be equal to that. We know D is one, so that forces C to be negative one. And we go up here, we want this to be the sum of everything here. And we have a one and a negative one. So already in our solutions, we have, um, we have a one, we have a negative one, we have a negative one. So what do we need to add here to get zero? Well, we need a one here. So that would mean A would be one. So A is one. Um, Okay, and B is negative one and C is negative one and D is one actually um, uh, solves this particular basis element. 
it wasn't too hard to solve that basis element, just kind of going through it. Um, and so we get that E4 has a solution that looks like this. Similarly, we can find solutions for the other standard basis tuples. We get E3 has this as its solution, E2, the one here, and zeros elsewhere has this as a solution, E1 with a one here and zeros elsewhere has this as a solution. So basically we have E1 is sent to this tuple. Uh, let's see, so E1 right here is sent to this tuple with a one and zeros. E2 is sent to uh, this guy, which could be re rewritten in order like this. E3 is sent to that, which can be rewritten like this. And E4 is sent to this, um, which is just a rewriting of that. So then what we can do is we can write these out in a matrix. So the image of E1 is right here, the first column. The image of E2 is the second column. The image of E3 is the third column. The image of E4 is the fourth column. So this matrix right here is the solving matrix. Once we have it for this particular structure or post set, how do we solve things? Well, let's take our cumulative sums, two, one, three, four. We matrix multiply this by this, and that'll give us the, um, the result. It's the same thing like saying two times this column, which is this uh, the image of E1, plus one times the image of E2, plus three times the image of E3, plus four times the image of E4. Um, and, uh, so basically we have these solutions and just kind of run like one times um, and or two times, one times, three times and four times. And then we add those up or just matrix multiply it however you wish like this. And you end up getting that. So this solves the system and you can check it. So um, up to this point, let's see, negative three plus four ends up being one. Very good. Up to this point, we just have four, that's four. Up to this point, we have negative one plus four, which is three. Good. Now, let's see. Two plus negative three plus negative one plus four is two, and you get that. Very good. So this solves the sum and problem from, from cumulative sums up to a point to sum ands. And we did it using a Mobius matrix. And that concludes this little read-along in... Um, in subsection 5.4.1. Thanks for watching.